How does anyone take a YouTuber to do that? Just, I mean, I guess once Logan started hitting him, he started feeling that, oh, this guy, if I, if I stay still, I'm gonna get clobbered. Did he get his ear, eardrum popped yeah, his ear, I mean, when I went to say something to him, first thing I looked at was his ears, I was like, oh, shit. This guy's bleeding. Logan never sat down through the whole eight rounds. Now, we wouldn't mind taking on that guy, Conor McGregor. A possible fight with Mike Tyson? Is that a possibility? Mike Tyson called him back the other night. So it wouldn't surprise me if Logan gets a fight with Mike Tyson and oh. that happens. Whether you like or whether you dislike Logan Paul, Floyd Mayweather, the whole YouTube boxing scene that's happening around the world right now, if you like boxing, you should really watch this full video where I talk with Coach Milton, the guy who trained Logan Paul to have so much success against one of the greatest fighters of all time, Floyd Mayweather. Logan didn't just go the eight rounds room, he also won a couple of rounds as well, which amazed so many people. And on this video, Milton and I talk about the game plan leading up to the fight against Floyd Mayweather. We talk about the mindset Logan had to be in to have success in this fight, the training methods that he did to get his body in the condition to be able to do this. And it's pretty fascinating what these boys have done. Now I've knew Milton for some time now, but after this chat with him, it really made me think of just how of a high level coach he is and how knowledgeable this guy is. And I don't think there's a coach in the world that could do as good a job as he's done with Logan. He's done fantastic and you know, this video is great. So if you like boxing, make sure you watch this full video. I learned a lot from him and if you're new to this channel and you don't know who I am, my name's Tony Jeffries. I'm an Olympic medalist boxer. I'm a former undefeated professional. I won seven national titles, a European gold medal. And on this YouTube channel, I give you lots of boxing education videos. So if you enjoy this video and you like boxing, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. And yeah, like I say, even with all that experience, I learned a lot of stuff from Milton. Milton is the man. I'm sure you'll enjoy this video, so enjoy. Milton, the yes, man sure, who now. took Logan eight rounds with Floyd, not only took him eight rounds, but he won a few of the rounds as well. Yeah, we did. Definitely won a few rounds. Mate, uh, how, how, do you, how does anyone take a YouTuber to do that? It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't easy. It was just dedication, hard work, and uh, Logan that he could taste it. Yeah, so how does a coach like you train, like, uh, train Logan to, to get in there and do like, like what's the game plan? You, there's 50 people trying to get in there and beat Floyd. No one's done it. People, world champions, pound for pound fighters. Now you're tra training someone who's had one fight and lost. And then, and then, and then this, like, <laughs> w w what's going through your mind? What's the game plan in that? Well, the game plan is just to teach Logan, like I train everybody else, to really box, to really be a real fighter. So, step by step, every time you turn around, he's just in that gym every day. He's learning every day. He's practicing his craft. He's mastering the craft. I mean, you know what I'm saying? He literally took this camp to Puerto Rico where he got out of California and decided he wanted to be left alone just to really understand. And, I mean, he's a, he's a workaholic. He's, he's a master when it comes to learning stuff. He picked it up easy. He really would have boxed a lot better, but I guess he got caught up in the moment. Like, yeah. Real quick after the first round, a lot. I guess he got caught up. But I guess he got caught up in the moment. In the moment. Like, yeah. Real quick after the first round, boxed a lot the first. But uh, if everybody, when when they get a chance to really, when he calms down and everybody gets a chance to really see him box, they can be very surprised. Yeah. He really knows how to fight. Well, it, it's a it's a big thing. Get, even at amateur level, getting in the ring, you know, you got so much experience when your first few fights. A, in a in a in a pub or wherever you were in a leisure centre, you know, fighting in front of a few hundred people, it's nerve wracking. But now he's getting on the biggest stage in the world and 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 fighting one of the greatest of all time. You know, it's it's so nerve wracking. So uh, I'm not surprised that when you when you're training, are you just focusing on what he's doing, or are you thinking about what Floyd might be doing? Are you watching well, videos? I, I, yeah, I I focus on everything. I focus on how Floyd fights, what he's gonna do. But it's so funny at the moment in time everybody changes up. Yeah. So Floyd changed up on us. Basically, Floyd sits around the ring, walks around the ring, plays with the ropes, dances, and he utilizes the ropes a lot, and that's where he sits. But this is one thing he couldn't do with Logan Paul. Right. Because once Logan Paul started hitting him, he realized he can't sit there. Because if he sits on the ropes, he's going to get hurt. Anybody could get hurt by any given punch, especially you got a 200-pound guy fighting a 140-pound guy or right. 160. That's, it, it was actually 30-pound difference, you know, 
So 30 pounds is still 30 pounds. So let me drop a 30 pound weight on your, weight on your feet. It's yeah, gonna be like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, so just that, I mean, I guess once Logan started hitting him, he started feeling that, oh, this guy, if I, if I stay still, I'm gonna get clobbered. So he started moving, he started coming out, he started walking down with his hands down. And Logan just took himself out of his game plan a little bit because all he had to do was just stick his jab out and then <laughs> drop that right hand right yeah. between his gloves. But you get caught in the heat of the moment, you get excited, you know, it's the adrenaline rush. You know, you, you, you have a game plan <laughs> until you get in there. Like Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until they can punch it. Right, yeah. We had a game plan. You know, we, at least we did what we achieved to do was one, Floyd didn't knock us out like everybody said. Oh, yeah. Everybody, nobody gave Logan a freaking chance. Oh, you're going to get knocked out. Mike Tyson said it. Everybody said yeah. it. But Mike Tyson called him back the other night. Mike Tyson calls me, hey, where's Logan? I, I put Logan on the phone, I called him. He talked to Mike, and Mike was apologizing. Oh, you, oh, did, really? it. you did it, yeah. You know, so that was nice of Mike to call back and apologize to Logan and saying, yo, you know, I was wrong. He said, I was wrong, I was wrong, you did it. You know, so it was really I heard, I heard Logan talking on a podcast, and he mentioned a possible fight with Mike Tyson. Is that a possibility? Only if uh, he leaves me everything in his will. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, right, we, we, with, and I was like, oh, as soon as I heard Logan say that, I was like, but then I thought, you know what? Mike is, he, I mean, Logan said it after the fight, anything is possible. Right. So it wouldn't surprise me if Logan gets a fight with Mike Tyson and well, that happens. Well, Mike Tyson would be not a bad idea, but Logan needs to get a few fights in between to get his comfortability in the ring a lot better. Right. Now, we wouldn't mind taking on, I thought he was here, that guy, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We wouldn't mind going a couple of rounds with him. I mean, just think about it. Floyd beat him up, knocked him out. Yeah. So why not fight somebody who went the distance with Logan? Yeah. Which would be a great fight. Exactly. And uh, what, is, what is next? Is that the one that we're going to be looking for? Well, I can't tell you what's next because I didn't talk to Logan. I'm on my way to Puerto Rico in a few hours. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just flew into California to talk to you. Yeah. Which I appreciate the, t the air time. Uh, we're on our way to Puerto Rico to figure it out because we're on our way to London. Once I go, we go back to Puerto Rico, I snatch yeah. Logan up and we all fly to London. So, uh, I just, like I said, I take my hat off to Logan. I take my hat off to Jake for the, the, the they're, they're putting asses back in the seats. And this is what people don't realize. If all these real fighters, and here's a funny thing before I get to that. Everybody's bitching and moaning and moaning and complaining about Jake Paul fighting nobodies. When you went to the Olympics, you went to the Olympics. Yeah. When you came out of the Olympics, how many real fighters Mate. did you fight right away? Mate, that's the thing. And I, I'm, I'm one who's sticking up for these boys. Look who I thought fought on my third fight. The person who I fought on my third fight, uh, Ben Askren would have probably stopped him. That's how bad he was, you know? And that's what people don't realize. Exactly. When you come out of the Olympics, when you fight all your life, as a little kid, you grow up and you, you get into the Olympics, luckily, you come out, you fight Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles, Jose Feliciano. You fight every bum under the sun and you build up your knockout ratio. You build up your your boxing reel, as they say, yeah. you know, and okay, knock this guy, knock that guy, and you just, and you build it up. So why is everybody complaining about Jake and Logan, but you can't even complain about Logan. I'm trying to talk about Jake right now, yeah. because Logan, he, after he fought two amateur fights with KSI, he went right to the top, Right. okay, he went right to the top. KSI literally was the same guy he fought as an amateur and as a pro, so it was like fighting the same guy, really nobody, he just went six rounds with him, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But to take from zero to 100, to come after Floyd Mayweather, the greatest, and I said it myself, if you get out of this round, you made it with the greatest fighter of all time. You got eight rounds with numero uno, number yeah. one. You can't get no better than this. And Logan did it. If he would have just, if he calmed down during the earlier rounds, it would have been a different fight. Yeah. Because when you see Logan, down the line, when you see Logan really fight, you're gonna say, wow, this kid could really fight. Only if he would have did that to Floyd, and that's what everybody's gonna be saying. Right. Only, only if, but listen, 50 people tried before. And right, 50 yeah. people got beat up. Yeah. And a lot of them got knocked the hell out. Yeah. So we didn't get knocked out. Yeah. We went the distance. We didn't get hurt, as everybody's saying about this invisible Logan Paul, he got knocked out. <laughs> if my ass fall on any little guy, I'm knocked out, you're going down with me. Right. You're not yeah. gonna hold me up. Yeah. So yeah. there's no way in hell that happened. And I like to go over footage on that later on down the line and show you that it really wasn't a knockout like everybody yeah, says. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Now, the person who got hurt the most in this fight, I hate to tell you, was Floyd. Because Floyd was bleeding out the both sides of his ears. 
So I think he had a serious headache. I heard, this fight. did he get his ear, eardrum popped? Yeah, his I eardrum heard popped, yeah. So, I mean, when I went to say something to him, first thing I looked at was his ears, I was like, oh, shit, this guy's bleeding out of his ears. Right. So I was like, I didn't, I didn't say nothing, I didn't even shake his hand, I just was looking in his ears going, and I wanted to get back to Logan and say, yo, you busted up his eardrums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like I said, any big guy coming down on you, it's not going to be an easy task. That's why they have weight classes. Yeah. I mean, if Floyd want to do it again, believe you me, we don't mind. You can jump back in the ring. If you feel that you knocked this out or you beat this up, let's get back in the ring and start all over again. We go number two. Yeah, I don't think Floyd wants to do that again. I don't think he wants to do anybody again. No, no, that, that's his it. His eardrums has already given himself a headache. But we don't mind entertaining him because he's, he's backtracking. Right. So if you're going to backtrack, listen, Logan did his job. Logan went in there. He hit you. He hit, he won two rounds with the greatest. Yeah. I gave him the first, the second. I definitely gave him the eighth. And once I look at the videotape, I'm going to start counting those punches to see how many rounds we really did win. You know, everybody's saying, okay, he got hit in the body. Floyd got the body shots. We saw that. Logan didn't go down. He hit him solidly in the body. Uh, Floyd opened up with a mean hook. Yeah. Put him right on the button. Yeah. Logan just looked at him. Now, here's a statistic everybody don't realize, Tony. The first punch of the fight was thrown by Logan Paul. Really? The last punch of the fight was thrown by Logan Paul. And the thing everybody, no, nobody said this one thing. Not one person, no one announcer, not one commentator, not one of these so-called experts. Logan never sat down through the whole eight rounds. Yeah. Never sat down. I noticed that. I noticed that. And I wanted to talk to you about that. So, yeah, I mean, some amateur boxers in, in, in the Olympics and all that, they'll skip the corner and they feel like they get the air through the body better. And I noticed uh, Logan didn't do that. And I was a little bit surprised because, you know, I, as a fighter, I used to like to sit down. I used to like that little rest. Yeah. I like to get like, the blood through, flow through the legs. But what was the, what was the thing behind that? Well, <clears throat> one, when we're sparring, we never, nobody never sits down. No, never. Nobody never, never. sits down. You still breathe in the same way, yeah. your lungs and everything work. You know, what I'm thinking, like sometimes with the cup on, you sit down, the cup gets stuck here, yeah. you know, and cuts you up and you're trying to breathe. That's why sometimes the guy's got the hands out, the legs up in the air, you know. So we asked him, he said, well, it, it's up to you. What do you want to do? If you yeah. want to sit down, I'll get you a higher stool. So sometimes with a shorter stool, you got to get a lot right, of time. Yeah. But with a taller stool, you're only going to sit down up chill. to this yeah. much and you just sit down right to here. Yeah. So you really don't bend. So he just, we tried the taller stool, we tried tall, we tried the short in camp. And he said, you know, I'm going to stand. And I go, you know, <laughs> hey, you're standing up all through, you stand through 12 rounds of sparring, 10 rounds of sparring, 8 rounds of sparring. What the hell's the difference? Yeah. If you stand yeah. here, if you stand live, it's, yeah. no big, it's no big deal. So, you know, and, and that'll stop you from going up and down with your legs. Yeah. You know, and if you look at Floyd, it was so funny. Logan's standing up and Floyd's sitting down. If you look at Floyd in his corner, he was like, I, I can't hit this guy. I can't yeah, I've seen guy. that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, Floyd gave Logan a lot of credit for this fight, especially in the round where he said he can't hit him. Guy goes, hit him with a jab. He goes, he I can't like, hit him with my jab. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. You know, and at the end of the fight where he said, man, this guy came well prepared. We did come well prepared. We came, grab your little ass, hold you, <laughs> lean on you, get you tight. Right. Take, start letting you feel what these 200 pounds feel like. You know, he got them body shots inside. He's crafty. He was slick. He would move. I mean, for 44 years old, I take my hat off to the guy. Right. But uh, if I got it, I'm sorry. Jake already took your hat. So we can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> love that, love that. So one thing, one thing, I like that. So one thing that I want to, uh, Mention is you've watched the fight back on Showtime. Not yet. No? I haven't watched it yet. Well, I haven't seen the fight yet. I haven't. I the fight's still playing in my head. I haven't. I haven't well, I do, you it. might you might have heard this, but I watched it and I was furious. I've done a video on this on on the channel about the commentators oh, because I heard a lot about that. But I didn't there see wasn't that. one. I mean, I remember a bit of credit for for Logan, Logan and I'm like. He's just beat, won the first round, and then we're like, oh, well, the next round is, and then he won the second round. I'm like, he's just won two rounds. Uh, give him some credit. Yeah, well, the credit. third round, Floyd, I'm like, shut your mouth, man. You know, give the guy some credit. Well, when he won the first round, I knew he won the first round. Yeah. When he came back to the corner, I go, hey, you won that round. I said, but don't get it twisted. We got seven more to go. <laughs> yeah. So that was nothing. That's nothing because, and then another, after he won the second round, I said, yo, I said, you won the second round, but this guy's going to come after you. He's going to start coming after you now because he's, he's down two. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If it was the six-round fight, and that's another thing Tony nobody gave Logan credit for. This guy never fought a day in his life. His first fights were six-rounders. Not even when you come out the Olympics, you're fucking fighting no, six rounds. No, four rounds. Four rounds. Yeah. And then he jumps into eight rounds with Floyd because Floyd thought he was going to take him.
happens, yeah. bro. You didn't drown him. No. You yeah. didn't take him to deep waters because we were ready for you. Yeah. We were sparring 12 rounds. We were going actually, and speaking about trying to drown him, this is funny. We went literally four minute rounds for sparring, four minute rounds. Wow. Right? Then the days we were running, I take Logan, we, we do a pool workout. We go running, we jump right into the pool. But I put 20 pound ankle weights on your feet. We shallow box with big ass gloves on in the, pool, in the pool, in the water. We go four rounds. Then we take you over to the deep side. You have to thread water for one minute without drowning. Wow. So you're sitting there, thread water. That's hard. With one minute, and he has to do the whole minute, and then sometimes we would cheat and go a minute, a minute 10, a minute, yeah. you know, to let him know. And so, and Logan said, this is the hardest thing you ever done. Try threading water for a minute. Yeah. After working and running, you're running five miles, six miles, jump into a pool, shallow box for like six rounds, and then thread water. That's hard, yeah. You know, but then we do, we do all kinds of stomach exercises in the water too. He goes into the side, lifts his legs up with the weights on, does crunches in the water with the wow, legs on, yeah. you know, squat, little squat jumps. And then go in here and thread water, Yeah. you know, for one minute without going down. Yeah, I've actually done a full YouTube video on doing boxing training in, in water and the benefits of it, and it's, and it's great, and it's so hard. Well, one, you don't get hurt. Yeah, you no, get Im hurt. no impact. And, and let's see, a lot of people goes, Who's this guy? Who's this guy training Logan Paul? What, how, what has he ever done? But a lot of people don't realize I trained Tiafimo Lopez since yeah. he was a baby. Yeah. So if Tiafimo Lopez just beat the pound for pound number one fighter in the world, which was Loman Chang, yeah. hey, you have to give me some type of credit right. because I had him since zero. I started this kid off all the way to 15, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and now Logan wind up going the distance with Floyd. So that's two fighters that's under my expert tutelage that I took and made do make some noise. Yeah. And Tiafimo Lopez is the pound for pound number one fighter in the world yeah, right now no, in his weight class. No, no, yeah, he has he's all great. The belts. He's great. I never yeah. knew that. I, I knew that you had lots of experience training different fighters, but I never knew yeah, you trained that I, guy. I, I worked with Gary Russell Jr. Great okay. fighter. Okay, Gary Russell, like his father called me right after the fight. Uh, even he father even called me before the fight and gave me some advice because uh, I've been working with Gary since he was nine. Uh, Sullivan Marrera out of, uh, out of Cuba, which had almost 400 amateur fights, but no defense. So I started running with defense. A lot, my, my specialty is I could teach you how not to get hit. You're going to get hit. But if the guy throw 10 punches and land one, that's a good ratio for you. Right. And if you throw 10 punches and land nine, that means you're always going to win. So my best thing is my, my slippery defense. I'm like the master when it comes Let to me defense. ask you about this because I've noticed that you, you've obviously trained Logan, I've seen Logan, how his style is, you trained my friend Jack, you trained Michelle, and one thing I've noticed about how you teach is this left hand down yeah, here. My hand, hands down. And I'm always like, ooh, right. that's risky. It is risky. So how do, you, how do you get out of the way of that right hand? Okay. What's the trick? What's the secret? Okay, well, normally I don't really show everybody what I do, but I'm going to give you the scoop. Yeah. Okay, you got to go this, stand this way so that everybody can see. Now, here's the, here's the funny thing. No, don't move. Stay right there. Here's the funny thing. The first thing they teach everybody is to do what? Keep your hands up. Yeah. Okay, keep your hands up and use what punch? The jab. The jab. Yeah. Okay, so here's what I do. I, I try to nullify your jab and take it away from you. Right. Okay, so everybody goes, why you take your jab away? So now put your hands up in your box and say, so I'm here like this. Yeah. Okay, so when you jab, yeah. jab touches my face. See, okay. Now I've paused this video right here for two reasons. Reason number one is what Milton shows me is fantastic. And we go on for about 15, 20 minutes. And what I've done, I've saved that clip and I'm gonna post this clip later on my YouTube channel as something separate. So if you haven't already subscribed and hit them bell notifications so you don't miss that video because I learned a lot from this guy, it's fantastic. And also the second reason why I stopped the video is to talk about my sponsor. Now don't stop the video, don't fast forward, listen to this cause it can definitely benefit you, like it benefits me. On it, from Alpha Brain. This is a supplement I take that really helps support my memory, my focus, keeps me creative, keeps me in great shape to do these videos and run the businesses that I run. If you need something to help support your memory, to, to support your focus, I can't, 
recommend this stuff highly enough. And what Honor have done, they're going to give every one of my subscribers 10% off this and everything on their entire website if you go to honor.com forward slash boxing. Now I'm going to throw that over there and I'm going to show you this. Now, hang whereas, bear whereas, bear whereas, because if you like that stuff and you think they were that stuff, this is the stuff that I take every day that has got that in it. So this is the Total Human Complete Supplement Packs from Honor. Yeah, the Alpha Brain is great and it's contained in this. This is a daytime and a nighttime formula. The daytime contains Alpha Brain and lots of other great supplements to keep your body healthy and sharp and how, like I say, support your memory, your focus, or your mind, everything like that. Then the other pack that is for the nighttime, which helps you relax. Uh, it helps me with anxiety, chill out for the night and have a great night's sleep. Again, honor.com forward slash boxing, you'll get 10% off this, everything on their website. I don't talk BS, this stuff is legit and it's fantastic. So guys, check it out. Okay, I'm gonna get back on with the interview with Milton. Anyone who's like, the critics like, he leaned on him, you held him. What the f do you expect? He's been with Floyd, like, and? And that's what I see, like, and? Yeah, and, and yeah, good. people like, and, what, what? Did uh, a few people hold for it? Everybody who fights him holds him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. everybody yeah. who fights him holds him. But the thing is, well, Floyd likes to hold on. When Floyd fought Ricky Han, yeah, he, what did Floyd, every time he was, he was holding on. And, yeah, the, and, the, yeah, and he, nobody complained about that. Not right? one person complained about that, you know? But yeah, the things have turned, and the, the boxing community have been outraged. They're, think, they're, they're thinking, this is hurting boxing, it's embarrassing the boxing, whatever. What about, what, about, uh, what about Tyson Fury, who's trying to fight Anthony Joshua, then that gets, that, I mean, isn't that hurting boxing? That's what I see. All these fights that's not getting made, isn't that hurting boxing? Well, this is it, getting more these eyeballs than boxing. You shouldn't be scared of nobody. If you're the best, you gotta get in there with the best, and these promoters need to stop babysitting and just right. put these guys to fight. They need to do what Logan Paul's doing, taking on the goddamn best no matter who it is. Right. Logan Paul did it, yeah. and you're gonna complain that he went out and fought the best when, when nobody else could go in there and pull much numbers as Logan did. They sold over, was it a million? I think a million, somewhat. Is that what it was? Hughes. Yeah. And that's only Showtime. That's wow. not all the other, that's not Fami oh, really? or nobody yeah, else. Yeah. That was only Showtime. Yeah. So they said they made like $50 million just in Showtime. And another thing, so with me owning two gyms in Los Angeles, I've never had so many people come into the gym because they're like, oh yeah, I've, I've seen the YouTubers are fighting or Logan's fighting or Jake's fighting. I, I thought, I, I want to give it a go. So for, for boxers and people out there who are saying, it's bad for boxing, it's not. It's getting okay. people in, it's, it's introducing. It's putting asses in the seat. Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting eyeballs on the bills. sports, yeah. It's helping some trainers who don't know how to teach a lick of boxing, that's another thing. There's a lot of these bogus ass trainers out there who don't know shit from Shinola when it comes to boxing and they think they do. You can't take an eight hour course and call yourself a boxing trainer. That's another thing. But, but I, 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 I agree if, you, if, if, you, if you're teaching fighters, if you're teaching a middle-aged lady how to box for fitness and she wants a few rounds on the pads and she wants to hit the heavy bag and, and mix that in with your other okay. strength session, um, then, then okay. there, then that's, that's, a that's great, story. yeah, it, it's, re but, it's really but good. You can't, but it, like, but if, if you, if you find, come into my gym in New York and she wanted to work as a boxing coach. This is a real gym. Yeah. You can't come in a real gym. It's different training fighters than it is yeah. people for fitness, yeah. but people training people for fitness, I think it's great. Another thing that is great for boxing, because it's getting more people a interested, people, you know, yeah. when, when they're teaching them fitness guys. Listen, there's a lot of people that watch the fight, especially the YouTube, the TikTok, and the, the TikTok oh, yeah. YouTube fight. It was damn near almost sold out. Every a lot of people, people who never even thought about boxing, was getting to that fight. I was there in the stadium. I'm watching all these middle-aged people, old people, young people, all types of people coming. I'm like, what the hell? Even people who the, the gothic people. Well, yeah. I saw gothic people. And I, was like, <laughs> I was like, there's not a gothic concert going on. People would come with the eye, the makeup in the hair. I was like, wow. whoa. Yeah. I said, this really, really turned yeah. out a lot of different ethnicities, different people from eight to eighty, blind couple of crazy. They were coming out. And and, and Glenn, my business partner, he was telling us that he watched a fight the other night. Was it Stevenson? I'm not sure. Some. I think it was Cruiserweight, undefeated, fighting an undefeated African guy, and they went 12 rounds, and the fight was like a bit boring. But then he watched the TikTokers and YouTubers, and they punched shit out of each other, and the entertainer it was like, it was actually better to watch this, it was more entertaining than, than the world title fights that's on. Yeah. So, you know, and especially when, when these big fights are not happening, that's what's hurting boxing. Yeah. You know? But if they don't make, if they don't put them together, Everybody gets pissed off. Like, yeah. Hey, listen, you can't. You gotta take your hat off to the TikTokers, the YouTube. Yeah. No, I love Paul, it. Paul, 
Jake Paul, they started this thing, KSI started this thing in London, England three years ago, and now it's taking a life of its own. Will, will Logan fight KSI again? That would be a great idea, but KSI I don't think wants to do that. No, he wants to quit while he's ahead, doesn't he? Yeah, he might as well quit while he's ahead. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then what's your prediction with Jake and Tyrone? Well, um, are you biased? I'm not kind of biased. I think that Jake would beat Tyrone Woodley. Remember, again, he's another MM, uh, MMA guy. He's not a boxing yeah, guy. Yeah. So, is he going to learn how to box in a short period of time? Is he going to learn how to throw the correct punches? Right. The most important thing is he going to learn how to take that serious punch once Jake unlo uh, right. un 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 unleashes it. You know, I, I told Jake, I think Jake in two. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Now, if Tyrone trains and, and makes up his mind, and remember, determination is a hard thing to beat. Yeah. You're determined to win. Yeah. You, I don't care who you are. That determination factor comes in, right. and you refuse to lose. Yeah. You know, you got to do your thing. Yeah. And does Jake and Logan spar with each other? Uh, never. No. Never. Never. No. All right, mate. Well, this has been great, and I've learned some stuff. And you know, now I mean, everyone who's watching this will really know now that you know you. You know, oh, you know, you know, I mean, I knew that before, obviously, to, to get to do what you've done with Logan and compared to the KSI fight, I know you had different people in the camp then well, and I came to the house. I had him in the beginning. Yeah. And then they decided they wanted to bring in this guy. Yeah. You know, and you was there. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, the, you saw the, 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 the chaos. Yeah, that was, the, that was for the KSI fight and I, they brought in the other guy and I was like, Hang on, you got Milton here, who's the fucking man? And then, for whatever reasons, the, the you know that didn't turn out well. But now, you know, we 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 seen that kind of was a mistake on on whoever's end decided. You know, they want to bring Newton the trainer in. But now, what you've just done there, if 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 Logan don't train like he did for that with KSI, it would have been a whitewash. You know? Oh yeah, if he would, yeah, you're hundred percent right. It would have been a whole different ball game. Yeah. You know, because my thing is stick and move. My thing is play a game. My thing is to get into the other fighter's head. My thing is to get into your head. My thing is to piss you off, and that's what happened. Floyd yeah. got pissed off. Yeah. I told Logan. I said, Logan, he's pissed off. He's so fucking pissed off. That's good. It's just that Logan needed to calm down. And if he would have calmed down and took advantage of that situation, it would have been a, it would have been a different night for Floyd. Yeah. But with that, it's, it's hard for him to calm down with the experience, right? Right. The that's experience the thing, factor. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Floyd has the experience. Floyd has the knowledge. Floyd will walk to you and go, yeah, you ain't going to hit me, you ain't going to hit me. But Logan had to be, it was just like I said, it was, he, he got into him, he just jumped the gun a little too fast, so he yeah. just relaxed a little bit and, and maybe took the first round and relaxed and worked on the second, then it would have been a whole different fight. Yeah. But listen, you can't cry with spilled milk, it's over with, it's done, we did what we had to do. And it's a victory. It's a victory in everybody's mind. It's a victory. Except for Floyd Mayweather, because yeah. he, like, he did something, but he, he let a YouTuber, a nobody, somebody with one goddamn pro fight, which actually, if you calculate it, Logan Paul's first real pro fight was Floyd Mayweather. Right, yeah. So if you want to really say, you let somebody with no experience carry you eight rounds and beat you two rounds, well, definitely three. I give him the eight <laughs> round two, and I got yeah. to look at the fight. Once I look at the fight, believe you me, it probably he probably won one of those rounds in there. Now the fight becomes a draw. Yeah. When I was watching it, I thought they were definitely the first two, and I, I can't remember him thinking he won the, well, anymore. But you said I'll it, have to watch the, it again. Even the announcers said it. Yeah. Because they said, oh well, next round. Well, the next round. Yeah. Well, the next round. Well, he, <laughs> he, he, he lucky that, that Floyd decided to chase Logan down. Yeah. And change the plan. Right. Because we were counting this little idiot running around the ropes and just making Bob and weaving slip yeah. and miss. But like you said, he was down two rounds. That wasn't working. And he had to try and come and knock him out, which yeah. he couldn't do. Much stack, he couldn't do that neither. Yeah. Mate, this has been great. My brother from thank another you so mother. Much. Yes, thank you so much for coming in. And uh, <laughs> hey. we should do some more stuff, some more technique stuff. That would be great. Oh, I'd be glad to. Maybe yeah. we should open up a gym. Come yeah. soon. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this piss. <laughs> yeah. Nice one, mate. Yeah, that was great, mate. Okay. That was great. Liking that it's stuff. Too bad for the couch. You never made it to the couch.